I'm just going to share something really short. I'm not going to take too long. Um, but, you know, I want to start off by, by just sharing a praise report, if I may. You know, God's, God's good to me too. You know, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. As of, as of April 30th, this past Friday, my wife and I are now new homeowners. And... <laughs> you know, and it's exciting because we've been actually in this journey of trying to purchase, uh, you know, our very first home since before our son was born. And, and now Jordan is one. So it's been about, you know, 18, 20 months. So it's been a long journey. But we've learned a lot along the way. You know, God's good. We have a new home, but we haven't moved in yet. <laughs> so we, we're still not enjoying the benefits of the home. And how many like moving? No, not any, no one's lifting their hands, you know. It's, it's the dreaded, I say the dreaded M word, moving, you know, because um, it's a lot of hard work. We have to adjust our schedules, right, so we can be able to go and move. We have to ask for the day off at times, you know. But um, so we haven't moved in yet. And, and this past Monday, I, I was with my son at home, and I just, you know, we're not moving into our new home for another two weeks. You know, but I just got the, the bug, you know, the little itch. We have boxes at home. They're just sitting there. We had tape. I'm like, we need to, I need to just pack something, you know. And the only thing I could think about was his toys, you know. So, so I started packing his toys. I, I, I tear the living room apart. So right now you walk into our apartment, all you have is a couch and boxes. And, you know, and I throw all the cables for the television everything in boxes and, um, you know, just pack it. I, just, I, I got excited. I didn't even know what was in those boxes. Uh, and then I'm carrying them to the, to the front of the living room, just getting them ready to, to go. And, you know, I noticed some of them were just a little too heavy. And, and you know, I'm not going to let these guys off the hook. They're going to have to go help me move. But I don't want them to get hurt at the same time. So I just, I, I went ahead. I took, I opened the boxes to, to make sure they're not that heavy. You know, and uh, I just started taking things out. And I realized, you know, when, as I'm taking the cables out for the television, I have a lot of cables that have nowhere to go. You know, I guess they were just sitting there, and, you know, they're just there. So I just started taking things out that did not belong there. I opened Jordan's box of toys. You know, I don't even think he's played with not even half of those toys. You know, I don't even think he knows they exist. You know, so I'm going to wrap them up and give them to, his, to him for his birthday next year. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't do that. <laughs> and, uh, or for Christmas. That's a good one, Christmas. Christmas is coming up. You know, so, so I just I figured, you know, there's a lot of things that were in those boxes that were unnecessary. Right? So I'm in this thought process. My wife gets home, and then she starts packing, too. She starts taking out a bunch of clothes, and, and you know, and I ask her. I was on my way out. I was going to go play basketball with Pastor Chris, and, uh, and she's just putting clothes in the boxes, and I ask her, what are you doing? And she, she says, you know, I'm sorting out things that we're going to donate because all this stuff we don't use. We don't, we don't wear it or we don't make use of it, you know, so there's no point in us taking it. And when she said that, you guys might think, you know, I'm kind of weird. But it's, it's almost like God just revealed something to me, you know. And, and, and it, was, it, was, it was weird because all of a sudden I just, I just, you know, I realized even though we're moving, I don't have to pack everything. Even though we're moving, I don't have to take everything, you know. Even though it's a bigger house, that doesn't mean that I have to take everything that I have with me to this next place, right. And the reason why it, it really hit home to me, you know, why it meant so much to me is because through this whole season, prior to my son being born, you know, God's just been dealing with me and in, in, in my heart, you know, because we all got heart issues, amen. And he's been re really dealing with me, to, uh, adjusting in life, you know, just making these adjustments in life, having a son, you know, um, you know, bills growing up, you know, ministry, the just changes in ministry. And, and you know, and, and as, the, as these things are, are going on in my life, God's just been dealing with my heart and, and different different issues and, and priorities and responsibilities. I want to be a better husband to my wife. I want to be a better father to, to my son, you know, and uh, I want to be the best servant I can be to my church, to my pastors, to my leaders. Um, you know, I want to be a friend to those that, that are, call me friend. I don't just want people that, that are there just to be there. I want to be a friend to them as well, you know, and all these things we have to work at. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and the, the verse that God's really been dealing with me is uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, that says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. Can we all say that? Love the Lord your God 
with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. Okay, and this is my battle with God. God, how can I love you so much and give you all my attention? You know, because in this, this season, he's just been pounding me. Elmer, you need to spend more time with me. There, I got so much more for you. I got so much more for you. I got so much more for you. You need to spend more time with me. I'm like, okay, okay, I get it. I get it. You know, but it's just so hard. But I got good excuses. I got really good excuses. Number one, I want to be a good husband. You know, I want to be a really good husband to my wife. You know, in two weeks from, from today, we're going to celebrate our third year anniversary. So that's, you know, I want to be the, I want to try to be as romantic as I can. I want to just, you know, I just want to blow, blow her world, you know, just, I don't know how you say it. I just want to, can you tell I'm not romantic? I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> I'll write you a song. Um, I want to be the best dad in the world. You know, Father's Day is coming up. So I, I'm waiting for Jordan just to come out of, you know, out of the nursery with that. You're the best dad in the world that the nursery workers write, you know, and, and they give it to you and you, just, you get all excited. But, you know, it's coming from him, so it's exciting, right? It means a lot. You know, I want to be a, a good son to my parents that are entering their, you know, retirement age and, and they live in California and, and here in the next month or two, they're, they're looking forward to moving to Texas. You know, so I want to be a good son. I've been away from my parents for about 10 years. You know, and, uh, you know, it's, been, it's a big portion of, of my life that I've been away from them. So I want to just be the best that I can be. I want to I be the best servant here at Calvary, you know, to, to my pastor, Pastor George, Pastor Ben, um, to the body of Christ. I want to be the best steward of my finances. You know, I want to take care of my money so I can give to the reaching ahead and, and to missions and just to, to invest and just to sow. And, you know, because it's about giving. Amen. And I don't have to preach on that. I want to be able to take care of myself, my health, you know, my physical body. I want to be really strong like Pastor Curtis, you know. And, uh, you know, and these are, you know, believe it or not, I think these are really good excuses, you know, to sometimes get distracted. You know, but um, I know God doesn't condemn us for, for wanting these things. I know he doesn't condemn me for wanting to be a good father, a good, a good husband. You know, but God does, does mention to me, you know what, Elmer, that's all good, but you need to set priorities in life. You need to have, you, you need to set a structure to how you live. He wants us to live with order. Someone say order. You know, sometimes we just live life just to live life. We live day by day, week to week, check by, you know, check by check. Just see what happens, you know, but God doesn't want us to live like that. He wants us to have goals. He wants us to set priorities. So we can be most effective in life and, and you know, in ministry. And, um, you know, and, and this takes me back just seeing how God's just been dealing with me in own order and structuring and, and being responsible. You know, believe it or not, I remember a situation when I was 14 years old. I'm 14 years old. My, my father and my mother call me into the kitchen. They said, sit down. You know, they have a piece of paper and a pencil. I'm like, oh, gosh, it's not that talk. No. It's not that time. You know, I'm freaking out. I don't know what they're about to talk, you know, what they're going to talk to me about. You know, I'm 14 years old. I'm a young teenager. And so they sit me down and, you know, and my mom says, it's like, son, you know, have you accepted Jesus into your heart? I'm like, yeah, mom, I accepted him when I was eight. She goes, okay. And she goes, Elmer, have you, do you love Jesus with all your heart? And I said, yes. So then she draws this picture of a heart. And then she tells me, okay, so do you love him with all your heart? And I say, yes, mom. I love Jesus with all my heart. So then she writes, Jesus. Just all across the middle of the heart, she writes, Jesus. And then she asks me the second question. She's like, son, do you love your family? And proudly I answered, duh. <laughs> the 14-year-old answered, duh, mom, you know. I love my family. She goes, okay. So then she writes, family. Then she asks me, do you love your church? Because I grew up in church. I grew up with, you know, playing instruments and with friends and families. And I said, yeah, I love, I love church. You know, church has been good. So then she goes, okay. And then she writes church. Then she tells me, do you love your friends? Because I always had friends over, driving them crazy. And I said, yes, I love my friends. And then she writes, friends. And slowly... She keeps asking me questions. My father asks me questions. And question after question.